guys. So welcome back. As you can see by the headline, I got some new pedals. Uh, I got a pair of Simgrade VX Pro pedals. I'm really excited about these pedals. Um, to be honest, I had a whole unboxing that I was doing. I did a first cut of this. Uh, I've actually had them on the rig for about 30 minutes last night, maybe 45 minutes, just testing them out, getting them set up. Um, took a little bit longer than I anticipated, but um, one, because I didn't read the manual, duh. But I had an unboxing video and I was going to do that thing and then realized, you know what, like, it's just a cardboard box. I need to redo this video again because I've learned some things just in the 45 minutes that I've gotten them set up. So for those of you who don't know, I saw a video by Dan Suzuka on his page about these VX Pro pedals. They were running a special. Um, the pedals were on sale for the set for $299. Um, he had this comment, he couldn't believe they were selling them for that much. Um, that in his early impressions, they were really good. Um, they definitely operate differently than anything I've ever used and anything I've ever really seen. So at the end of the day, I was like, you know what? I'm going to take a chance. I took a chance on getting my Moza R9 and I enjoyed it for as long as I had it until I upgraded it to the VRS. Um, I enjoyed my CSL V1 Elite pedals until uh, I got the Husingvel Sprints. And now I've got these. Um, the reason why many of you are wondering, like, why would you upgrade if you have sprints to these? Um, for me, I wanted more uh, kilograms of pressure or force that I could put down. Um, this has a 200 kilogram load cell on the brake. It has 100 on the throttle, which don't really need it for that. But ultimately, I wanted to be able to apply more brake force and have a more clearly defined threshold. I had it on the sprints, but I had to max out those sprint pedals at the 65 kilograms and these do 90. So um, yes, it can do up to 200 kilograms, but you're not gonna use, uh, and that's not what it's rated for. You're actually gonna only use up to 90. So with that being said, it was like, you know what? The price was $299 for a throttle and brake with more pounds of pressure for the brake itself. And the throttle looked pretty cool. And I said, you know what, at that price, even if it doesn't work out, I'm pretty sure somebody else would buy them for what I paid for them. At the end of the day, I got them for $299 um, plus shipping. I didn't have to pay tax or VAT tax because I'm not overseas. So I had them shipped by DHL. Um, actually pre-ordered them. That was the pre-order price. They had to be done by March 31st. Anybody who knows me who has watched my channel knows I absolutely despise anything <laughs> pre-order like I hate spending money and waiting months to get my stuff um, some of you have ordered wheels some of you have ordered pedals some of you have ordered dashes some of you have ordered all types of gear and as you know in the sim racing world which is really crazy because we wouldn't allow this to happen in any other world where you pre-order something for three thousand dollars four or five thousand dollars and you wait and I don't have to list any products. You can already think of something. And I'm pretty sure, as I said, that you already had something on the brain. Um, so with that being said, like, yeah, I hate pre-orders because I give you my money and I wait for a promise that you will deliver them on time. These were slightly delayed, so I was a little perturbed. But again, they were delayed to make them better. And anytime you're going to delay something because you found out things that are better than what you were originally going to do, I'm more than willing to take that chance. And again, as much as I hate waiting, these are well worth the wait. Um, as the title says, are these better than Husingville Sprints? Well, we'll get to that point. But first, we're going to just take a look at them in their profile. So if you look at them from the side profile, this one being the throttle, this one being the brake, you can see they look vastly different than anything you've probably ever seen before. Um, the mechanism and how they operate are completely different. I can't say I've ever seen anything operate like this before in my life. And the more I see it, the more I go, man, this is just something crazy. Um, but again, everything that is going to be great, sometimes you got to take a chance to see how things are going to work. Um, they work really differently, again, than anything I've ever used. But again, I've got plenty of range to use them. Like I look at the throttle here, and of course I can push it down. Um, I've got plenty and... What's happening is I've actually removed some of the hinges and I'll explain why in just a sec. But I've got plenty of throw in the throttle and again, I've adjusted it, but I've got plenty of throw in the throttle for me. 
to do any racing that I'm going to use. And then the brake, because I can max it out at 90 kilograms, which I'm not going to max it out at 90, but I can get significantly higher than the 65 kilograms. I think I'm going to be around 75, to be honest, um, that gives me a more clearly defined threshold. So again, it is something I'm getting to learn, enjoy, uh, and try out. And again, the more I try it out, the more I make adjustments, the more I see how much I like it. Um, adjustments for these pedals will go over real quickly. Um, and after using them, I was like, wow, this is pretty cool. So some of the things I'm going to tell you just off the rip, if you were to buy them, first, I'm going to talk about mounting, because I think that's the most important thing you have to do when you get them out the box. Um, after looking at them and thinking they're so pretty, it's putting them on your rig. If you can see here, there's a screw here and there's a screw here. And you can see there's quite a bit of screws and points that are on here that you're not really going to adjust ever at all. But you have two screws here, one here and one here. These screws here, and there is a corresponding screw on the other side. These screws here, if removed, are going to be whether you tilt it straight up like this or you tilt it forward slightly. I'll be honest, as when I think about the Hussing Belt Sprints, the range of adjustability significantly more. They've got that down. Like you can adjust the Hussing Belt Sprints to tilt further back or to tilt forward. Um, this really has two adjustments. Um, and to be honest, I left it in the straight up vertical uh, because to me, that's how I want them mounted on my rig. And to be honest, I've got a pedal plate, so I can always adjust it down or tilt it forward, depending on what I think is best for me. But at the end of the day, I have them facing straight upright in a 90 degree angle because that works best for me. Um, the pedal plate, after using it for about the 45 minutes yesterday night, um, or last night, I really enjoy it a lot. And I'll tell you why, because I'm a person who races with socks. And I hate doing, I hate watching videos of people with their feet on throttle and brake pedal, but I'm going to have to succumb to that so you can just see how it looks and I can explain how it feels. I hate watching them just because like you can tell me, but I do see the value in showing you rather than just telling you so you can see it for your own eyes. But again, this here will allow you to adjust whether they sit a little bit closer to you or sit at a 90 degree angle. This one loosens it here so that you can actually move it forward and back. But there's a benefit to both of these here is when you attach it to your rig. So one of the things you're gonna do when you attach it, if you look here, there are two screws. And here, there are two screws. So if you see, there are four where you're going to mount it and they provide the screws to mount them on. Um, when you wanna mount it, the best thing will be to actually remove these screws here and I'll remove those there because first you're going to mount this one in the front. To get at the back in its normal position, it would sit here. You can get to the screws back here if you look, but if you take it off, now you can tilt it forward. And now you have a better angle to get at the screws to mount them on. So you can mount the back to the front, front to the back, whatever works for you, and then plop them back on. If you look really closely here, you'll see the screws here, the holes. And again, that's just whether or not you wanna tilt it here. As you can see, it comes a little bit further forward or you want them to be straight upright. For myself, straight upright is the way I'm going. Um, and again, in order to tilt it, you have to loosen up this screw. If you do not, it's just gonna be solid as a rock and you're not gonna be able to move anything. As you can see by the mechanism here and back, when you step on the throttle, it's going to bump up against these plates here on the side. These plates can be moved forward and back to reduce the throw. And then if you want to adjust how much strength you actually have to put down, this piece, moving it forward, there are essentially grooves here. And there are three sets of grooves. All you would simply do is you would loosen up the retention screws here. And I wasn't going to do it, but I guess for the sake of the people who are watching this video, you probably want to see. So I'm going to remove my preload here. I'm going to loosen this up here. And of course, I'll tighten it again. 
when I get it on the rig. The more I loosen it up there, now I can slide it back. If I slide it forward, there's far less resistance. I can slide it all the way back. If I slide it further back, there's far more resistance. Now, with a throttle, I don't know a person that wants that kind of resistance on the throttle. Too far forward, to be honest, a little too soft for me. I mean, I can move that all the way down. That's just too soft. Right in the middle, and then adjusting my preload and the spring tension here, to me, makes the most sense. And by doing that, again, that just gives me the ability to have the kind of throw that I'm looking for when driving in a, uh, driving anything. So I'm gonna put these screws back here so that I do not lose them, because, you know, I am an old man, uh, as you can tell by this wonderful beard, and losing these screws is not something that I want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and put these back in real quickly, uh, and then we'll go ahead and take a look at the brake, because, uh, again, the brake is doing something rather cool. Um, and, again, as you can see, load cell is back here, and what it's doing is by stepping on the throttle here is putting pressure on your load cell, which is interpreting it into the game uh, via their software, which again, software is pretty easy to use, but I'll put that over to the side and we'll sit that here. So again, looking at this funky looking thing, it's like, what the crap is going on here? There's a lot going on. There's a lot of adjustments to make, a lot of arms and things that are here. But again, everything here is done by design. Same thing as the throttle. If you're going to adjust and attach this to your rig, you're gonna to wanna to loosen up these bottom screws, keep them in, but keep them loose, take out these screws all together. And then just like the throttle pedal, if you want this to be a little bit further forward, it's not a lot of adjustment, but you can tilt it forward slightly. So that does give you that option there. And again, as you can see, the pedal plate, again, it's wider than my Husingvelt Sprints, um, but to me, the holes are at the top so I've noticed with my socks on, it doesn't really cause too much discomfort. In fact, I haven't had any so far, but I haven't done any endurance racing in it just yet. So we'll, the jury will be out on that when we have a more long-term approach to looking at these pedals. Um, I will say that again, because they're simple, I'm hoping that they offer something for people like myself who race in socks. I think that would be a great addition additional pedal plates, or, you know, I know there are companies that make pedal plates uh, for various different companies, a set of pedal plates that have some texture on it. So that again, I race in socks, but something that's bigger, I'd like something a little bit wider. So that again, for a person who races in socks, having addition, additional pedal plates just makes my life easy. And it gives me options, especially if they're colorful, because then, you know, as a sim racer, we want everything in our colors. And you know, that black and orange looks pretty cool. Um, flipping it again to the side, similar adjustment to the sprint pedals. Um, if you loosen up the screws here, then you can adjust and actually loosen up some more. And we'll take a look. So like everything, if I put this for the forward, it's going to be far less resistance. I can slide it all the way up to the top here and I'll get significantly more resistance. If you want something that feels rock solid and rock hard, then I would adjust it to the top. I don't think that is necessarily beneficial for my type of racing. I've always liked more travel when I race um, with a clearly defined braking point. And then from that braking point, um, being able to you know, modulate my braking just like I would modulate my throttle, but be able to trail brake properly. So I'll be honest, so this design, again, something I never thought I would ever see. Um, and again, didn't think I'd be like many of you diving and dumping money into this money pit that is sim racing. But the more you do it, the more you love it, the more you just want to spend more of it on something special. So we'll go ahead and put that back down there. I'll go ahead and tighten those up later. But again, just like the throttle, when you're going to put these on your rig, loosen up the screws, put them in the bottom, put them here. Now, again, these cost me $299, and I think they are amazing pedals. So what we're going to do is we're going to get them on the rig, and then we'll go ahead and take a look at them there and tell you what I think. All right, guys, so 
we've got the VX Pros mounted to the rig now. Um, we're going to take a better look at the software first before we get into running some laps. Um, so this is what you're seeing on my screen. This is the SimGrade pedal calibration tool. Um, this is their 1.0 version. So obviously with new pedals comes their first version. Um, and I can tell you there are some things I really like about it. Uh, coming from the Sprint pedals, uh, that software was very simplistic, but it had all the things you needed in it. So I feel like one thing that this is missing just right off the bat, um, this can go up to 90 kilograms of brake force, but I don't see a area in here to adjust the brake force. So I hope that that's something they're going to add in the near future. But outside of that, to be honest, it does all you need it to do. Um, when looking at it, to be honest, it's, you know, here it's got, you know, it's going to tell you what pedals you have. And granted, this is simply for the VX Pros right now. They have different software for their R7s and Theras. But with that being said, these are perfectly fine. This is easy to use. I have chosen to hide the X axis because I do not have a clutch. And the X axis is for clutch. They give you a little hub that's 3D printed that you plug your pedals in directly. Um, so the X is the clutch, the uh, Y is the brake, the Z is your throttle. So I have chosen to click this little radio button down here uh, to hide that axis. And, you know, you have the debug where you can hide it or show it. I have chosen to just show it. Um, but again, at the end of the day, I've hidden the axes that I don't need to see so I can configure. Um, now, you have a few different options over here of what you can do. Um, one thing you can do is adjust the font size, which is great because I can tell you when you're on 27s or 32s and you have a high resolution for racing, it doesn't really always fit when you're looking at font size, especially when, for me, I'm looking at a distance because I still have my stuff on a desk, unlike some who have theirs on a mount and a whole rig setup. So um, I do appreciate that. With that being said, um, the first thing we're going to look at is you have these two buttons here, read configure from device and write configuration to device. Um, if you have a configuration that, you know, you're going to have one that comes with the pedals initially when you get them. So you're going to read the configuration from the device when you first open them up the box and then make any adjustments to the pedals, uh, how you like the feel of it first before you open up the software to start messing with what you're going to do as far as your calibration and your dead zones and things like that. Um, it's very simple um, once you read the directions, which I failed to do the first time. Uh, part of that is uh, just a, a male problem uh, of the male species. Um, but what I ended up doing was once I was able to understand, you know, you have your the Z axis here, which you're looking at your output and then your raw output. So this is what's being interpreted to the game. This is the raw output. So as you can see, when you start to look at my throttle here, you have minimum, center and maximum. It will calculate the center based on your minimum and max and then calculate what the center of that number is automatically. So you don't need to do it. If you want to manually manipulate it, you can click this radio button here. You can change it yourself, but we're going to leave it and let it automatically calculate that center. Um, for me, 1800 was my minimum based on how I have the throttle set. Um, this way, when I rest my foot on it, it's not going to transfer any data into the game. You're not going to see any feedback on the telemetry as I rest my foot on it, which I tend to do. So I made it 1800, probably a little high. But if you see, it's between 1730, 1750 and fluctuating, just depending on how I'm resting my foot in. I want to actually have a deliberate press before it recognizes any output into the game. But again, that raw data is you know, going to not kick it until it gets to 1800 and then you start seeing output into the game. Um, now, because it's a load cell, um, I wanted my throttle pedal to just basically get to 100% when I hit the physical stop. Because it's a load cell, I can go significantly past it, but I'm not going to ever race like that using a throttle. So that's where you get into the hall sensors versus load cells, what's more useful. Um, you know, as long as it interprets it in the game, I really don't care. But again, that calibration, because it is a load cell, you get that additional range when you're pressing harder. So I've also, oh, there go my lights flickering. I have no idea. I need to check the circuit there. Um, but with that being said, yeah, so I've calibrated it that way. Um, next, we have our brake. Same thing. You know, I 
rest my foot on it just to see. And depending on how I rest my foot on it, how much pressure I put, then, you know, I start to measure some input. So I was very conservative uh, or quite liberal, actually. I'm making it 920. So again, I have to have a deliberate push before I start to register any output into the game. Um, one thing, like I said, I'm missing, like I can make these adjustments in the game. My problem is, you know, like granted, like I am pressing, but I don't see anywhere in here to adjust the killer glamps of force I want to use. I was using 65 on the Husingvelt pedals. I want it to be somewhere around 70, 75, because 65 was the max. And I was using that max on those pedals. So being somewhere around 75 was ideal for me. Um, but I can't adjust it in here. At least I can't figure out how to adjust it. And as I play around with things, I'll figure that out. But I am pretty sure there's an alternate way of doing it. I just need something in the software to do so. So anyway, once you go ahead and make your numbers and adjust them here you hit right config to device now it sends it to your pedals and that will be the setting you use moving forward what you'll want to do after that is you can set up a profile so for example i'm playing iRacing i'm going to go ahead and set up and save that configuration to a file once i click save it's going to ask me what i want to name it name it i named it iRacing hit save since i've already created ask me do i want to replace i hit yes if I want to load a configuration from a file and say I had ACC, R Factor 2, F1 2023, and so forth, I could have configurations for each game, which I think is always going to be incredibly useful. And many of the higher end pedals have some way of saving, um, or good pedals have a way of saving different profiles. So you can use it later, later depending on what game you're racing. So once you get this configured here, if you want to see how it looks and actually works and make adjustments to the curve, in this separate software, again, well, not software, in a separate page or tab, you're going to see now you have your axes. So since there is no X axes, you won't see anything move simply because I don't have a clutch. If I go to Y, now you start to see my brake start to move. For example, as I rest my foot on it, as you can see, it is moving, but it's not registering any output into the game. It's just moving along the bottom axis here. Now, once I start to put pressure, then it'll move along that curve and we'll go forth that way. Same thing with the Z axis, which is my throttle. As I move it along that curve, you will see it go clearly above because again, the way I've registered it, I want to get to 100% at the physical bump stop, but because it's a load cell, I can continue going even further. So again, and you can change your different type of curve based on what you want. Um, again, those adjustments depend on how you race, depend on what you race, depending on what type of car you're racing, whether you want something like this, which if you're racing an F1 car, may make sense. Maybe you want it in again, and you want to send this to the device. What you would have to do is write this configuration to the device. Once it's written and sent, now it goes along that curve. So as I register quite a bit of force, it simply does not register as much into the game. So if you're an F1 car, you can be at 50% or so, but it's still not registering a lot of throttle in the game. I'm going to reset it back, write the configuration to the device. Once it's sent, we're good to go. So it'll follow along that curve. All right. So like I said, it's a pretty simple software. Um, if you want to make changes, you can manipulate and drag and things like that. But I'm going to, again, reset it back to its norm um, and go with that. But again, you have the option to make any changes to these curves that you so see. And you've got the little eye bubble, which will give you any directions on how to make changes here. So again, like I said, I would love to see something that tells me how to change the kilograms of force because i'd like to get the full range of the pedal just decrease the force of the load cell so that i get the full range but i don't have to have as much force so i can have an even more defined threshold with that being said the pedals are still really great and i i think i'm starting to like them immediately even from the limited time i've had a chance to use them so what we're going to do is we're going to close out of the software here what we're going to do is get us on some eye racing and take a look at how they perform. Um, hopefully you don't mind seeing my little foot shot here 
Um, I've always said that I despise watching any review of anything that has heat in the, you know, in their review. Um, like these pedal reviews, I've always been like, I really don't care to see them. But one thing I realized is they bring some value to some people. And as much as I don't really enjoy them myself, I do think there's value in using it as well, simply because, again, some people want to see just how the pedals operate. Some people want to see how they feel, how much give and take there is in the pedal, um, and then be able to make an informed decision. So I always think if you think there's value even above what I like to do personally, um, go ahead and let me know and provide feedback along the way. So let's go ahead and get this car started. And what we're going to run is the LMP3 here at Alton Park. I have yet to do a race here so far, but what I'm doing is, you know, I've been practicing quite a bit, but I haven't really practiced much with this particular pedal, which again, I am absolutely enjoying. I can tell you this much, the more I get used to it, the more I go, man, they feel nice underfoot. And one of the things that I enjoy about these pedals is as a person who runs with socks all the time, um, it is rather nice to have larger pedals with no holes in the center. So this way my feet don't actually uh, feel sore after racing. Now, I will say that one of the things I would like is if they offered additional pedal plates uh, without holes in them and maybe something that has a little texture this way i can go ahead and uh get those and and you know try those out because again i love racing in barefoot and hopefully there will be options from third-party vendors um because at the end of the day one of the things i did enjoy about the sprint pedals um plus the the wonderful 3d printed uh throttle pedal that was made for me by my guy matt is when you're very popular and you've got a lot of support people tend to make aftermarket products for you and one of the things that was cool on there was there were a few people that made aftermarket uh, replacement pedals but what i can tell you i'm feeling here is i'm getting the range of motion that i like in my throttle i don't need a lot of travel um in my throttle that's something that you know, what it has and the options that it has for some may not be enough travel. Um, for some, it'll be too much. So it just all depends. It's so subjective, uh, any pedal. But I can tell you, they feel underfoot. They feel really nice. And with the brake, since I have more kilograms of force that I can apply, it is something that, again, I'm having to fine-tune where I want that threshold to be, where I want that 80% to be, because when you're racing and I racing, you really want to have, you know, your brake threshold that you are able to uh, hit in game each and every time at 80%, pretty consistent. So that's one thing I've got to make sure I map properly. Um, and as I'm getting there, I'm just feeling out the pedals, seeing how they work. Uh, again, this being my initial impression of the pedals obviously i won't have a very uh in-depth impression of them until i use them for a while so i can't say well this is how they're going to feel in six months because i haven't had them that long but for now i can tell you they feel really nice uh, they feel really good underfoot uh, the plates are pretty large enough for me to use to get done what i need to get done with them So, ultimately, I think they're a great value. And bear in mind, like I said, I, I paid 299 for them because I got them during their pre-order pricing. And like I said, they have so much of an option in the software that as much as I don't run a clutch, maybe I'll get one in the future. Because the price was so good on these compared to many of the options out there, I really don't I really have saved a lot of money on these pedals and the good thing is my sprint pedals 
that I did love and enjoy. I just wish, you know, again, the pedal plates were larger as well as it just had, you know, if it had 80 kilograms of braking force, I probably would have been satisfied. But the 65 GS just was at the just too low for what I was looking for. Um, so having the 90 kilograms of which I can go up to, which again, I need to figure out a way to make that adjustment, is just awesome. I mean, they, these pedals feel great, um, even at the full price of 399 you, you can't get many pedals, as I've stated before, um, on many of these sites. When you look at the price, 399 oh, such a great price. It, it's such a great, 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 great set of pedals. And it's almost like, how are you selling them at this price? Um, you know, and they save some money by, again, putting, you know, the, the hub to connect the pedals on the 3D printed housing. Don't even care. Um, you know, that that's something very simple. Um, you know, they didn't go with custom bolts. It's literally something you can buy off the shelf. Smart, like, saving money where they can. But these are machined very well. They feel great underfoot. And again, I, I'll, I'll just... I'm thoroughly impressed. Uh, sim grade, I, I really enjoy these pedals a lot. Like I said, my big thing is, please put something in the software to uh, adjust the you know, kilograms of force for the pedals. I'd like to be able to dial in a number, try different feelings, get the full range of motion of the pedals, and go from there. Um, oop, about to, about to go ahead and get off the track there. <laughs> but yeah, if, if they can put in just that, to me, I think that fits everything I need them to do. I don't need them to do any more than that. I just need them to put that you know, kilogram of force in so I can make my fine tune adjustments, figure out what I like, and go from there. Yeah, so that's pretty much all I have to say about just trying the pedals, my first impressions of them. And like I said, I've ran them for about 40 minutes yesterday and I've had to make some adjustments to them. Um, you know, I took them out the box and was so excited to film my first impressions of opening out the box and then got them all hooked up really didn't give you guys the amount of details that I think was necessary um, in, in the first impression and things that I've learned so in just an hour of playing around with them so I hope that as always if you enjoy the videos that I share um, that after we sit down and talk about what I think about them you go ahead and subscribe so as always let's get these back off the rig show you what they look like um, and yeah, come to our final conclusion. All right, so we've done some racing with them. And I can tell you, I like these a lot. Um, I like them a whole lot. The more I see them, the more I enjoy them. The more I think they're absolutely awesome, the more I think you ought to consider them. And the reason why I'm gonna tell you to consider them is, let me take a look at my iPad here. So. For the price, right now they're currently listed at 399 euros. Um, depending on where you are, obviously that cost would be different. So I'm just listing them because on their website they list them at 399. Obviously that includes uh, any potential tax or VAT tax, so you have to calculate that stuff into your purchase. Um, you may also find a reseller that sells them and it's gonna cost you cheaper because you live closer to the reseller than getting them shipped from, uh, I believe it's Finland. For me, they, once they ship them on a Monday, I cap them on a Wednesday. Thank you, DHL, for just that expedited service is absolutely awesome. Um, it actually was scheduled for a Thursday, but because it got here early, I was able to change it to Wednesday. So with that being said, for $399, now mind you, I got them for $299, which again was a steal, and I'm glad I did that. But for $399, again, you get 90 kilograms of actual force you can apply. Um, it supports up to 200 kilograms, but again, you're not going to apply that much. Um, the angles that you can adjust to it, again, gives me the perfect angles for myself to make adjustments. I, as much as a sim, the Husingveld uh, Sprint pedals had far more adjustability, for my particular use case, it wasn't beneficial because I would set it in one particular 
setting and then I would move forward. So for me, um, worked fine. They do have additional pedal plates and heel stoppers. Um, they have the heel stopper that you would attach on to the end here, basically to keep your foot from sliding right and left. And I know some people I've watched online tend to do that. So maybe that's beneficial and I might look into that soon myself, um, as well as heel stoppers and things like that. Um, but again, looking at it, I just think it's absolutely amazing. And the reason why I keep looking at my screen is because if you wanted to get just a set of Husingfeld Sprint pedals, the throttle and brake, you're going to spend over $500. Whereas you can get these for $399. So again, both amazing pedals. I will tell you, get whatever you want. Get what you have saved your money up for. But if you're looking to save some money and get something that I think you would really like and enjoy. But again, it comes down to want versus rationality, especially with sim racers. I wanted a Semi Cube 2 Pro. I was rational enough to go and get a VRS, and now that I have it, I am perfectly solid. I am good. I don't think I'm going to need anything for the foreseeable future. Now I'm a sim racer, so that may all change in six months. But the way I see it is I'm not going to need anything for quite some time. So $539, and again, if you don't, if you're never going to max out, then again, the Husingfeld Sprints are perfectly fine. I absolutely love and enjoy them. Um, actually, a buddy of mine is going to buy them from me for the exact same price I paid for these pretty much with shipping. So at the end of the day, um, he's going to make out as a winner. I'm making out as a winner because I get what I want. And the money I make from those will pay these off. And he's saving significantly more money than buying them new. But I wouldn't tell you not to get Sprints because they're great pedals. And I think if you need more adjustability um, and you want some other options with that, then... The sprints are absolutely amazing, and I would tell you not to get them. The next pedals I would look at is people who are fanatic. So from my understanding, the VX Pros actually may have some sort of uh, console support with some sort of hub. So I would say definitely check that out. Um, yeah, it says compatible with consoles via Drive Hub. Um, extra info for PS5 here. So these are compatible with your console. Obviously, there's additional things you have to do to make them compatible. Whereas if you're on console and you have a Fanatic setup, getting a set of Club Sport V3 pedals, go ahead and get them. I know they have their inverted ones as well, significantly more expensive. But I would say if you're on PC and you know you don't have to have pedals attached to the wheelbase, now, there are adjustments you can make on the fly on a Fanatic wheel, which I think is absolutely awesome. And if you have that ecosystem and it works for you, I would not tell you to change. Getting those or getting a set of CSL Elite V2s, which we're going to mention next, um, may be something that you would look into. But if you're on PC and you don't really care about making adjustments on the fly, I'm not sure how many people make adjustments on the fly to their pedal braking. Um, I did not, once I said it, I said it and forget it, unless I'm playing a different sim, then I might have a profile different for that sim, like going from iRacing to ACC to Assetto Corsa to Race Room and all R Factor 2 and all the games in between. But these are $399.95, but they do come with a clutch. This is just a two pedal set. So again, if you need a clutch, that's a better value. But when I think of in terms of adjustability, I, I think of in terms of what I can and cannot do, um, I would prefer these. But again, that's a three pedal set to a two pedal set. Do you need a clutch? What are you racing where you actually need a clutch versus what you don't need? I don't know. And those are use case scenarios. But again, depending on where you're trying to spend your money. Now, if you're just in the market to get any set of pedals because you're an entry level racer, we're gonna have a video talking about where you should start at what you should save your money up on, where you should invest your money, and what's a good bang for a buck, especially when you're coming in for the first time, starting off used, to then going, I really like this a lot, save up your money and get the best you can afford, and deal with the low-end gear. But we'll talk about that in depth, because again, one of the things I really think that I didn't do, or I didn't know, or I didn't understand, was coming into this, how much money it could cost, it would cost, how much I'd get addicted to it, and what I think is necessarily best for noobs like myself when I started it almost a year, and a little more than a year and a half ago when I first started to now. So definitely want to get some feedback on that. But again, if you're in the market for pedals, you're a fanatic ecosystem person, then you have some options. But if you're willing to go outside of that ecosystem, I would say these again are a better bang for buck unless you need a clutch. 
again, uh, the three pedal set with the clutch. Let's take a look at that and see what that would cost you is 547 euros. So again, significantly cheaper than things like buying the sprints with all three. But again, I don't need a clutch. So for me, that is just not worth it. Um, so then, you know, last but not least, I would say in that same price range are your CSL Elite pedals version two. Um, I started out with the CSL Elite pedals V1 with the load cell. Love those pedals. I'll be honest. I did a video a while back, one of my first videos asking like, did it really make me faster getting, going from the CSL Elite V1 load cells to the sprints? Um, I can tell you over time, I got more consistent with my braking, um, just because again, um, but load cells will make you consistent by the nature of the fact that they're load cells. Load cell pedals will make you understand and be able to brake better, significantly better than something that's just my, measuring your position. Um, as we know, trying to measure your position where this is along the spectrum is really hard with no, but now if I'm pushing back on something, I can measure if I go here, if I go here each and every time, no different than using, and again, because these are load cell, if I was to actually crank it up, I could do that here as well. So again, load cell pedals by their nature, um, if it's a decent set of load cell pedals, you'll do better. Even some of them cheap load cell pedals, to be honest you'll do better than you ever would with something that's just tracking your position. Now, the quality of the pedal and the load cell and the range of adjustments, those things will also make you better. CSL V2s, again, 299. If you're in the ecosystem of Fanatic and you need a clutch, I would get those over the V3s any day. I think the better value are these when comparing them to the V3s. I don't see what you get significantly better with the V3s for an extra hundred dollars. They look nicer, I will be honest there. Um, but once you get from 299 to 399, again, where's the extra hundred dollars in value? To me, if I'm going to spend money, I save that additional hundred dollars and I put it somewhere else um, because you can be just as fast and just as quick. And many people are really fast on CSL Elite V2s um, or some people are really fast on Logitech pedals. So. Um, buddy of mine I know who's really quick on some cheap pedals too. So again, it all varies. Um, but at the end of the day, it's about finding that value. And I think bang for buck, even at $3.99 for this two pedal set is a steal. And I would tell anybody and everybody, if you're looking for two pedal sets um, that are not tied to an ecosystem, that give you variability, that give you adjustability, maybe not as much as some others, but again, there's a vast price difference in trying to use some of those pedals. And again, I know there are a litany of other pedals on the market that I could be talking about, but I think the sprints are kind of the go-to pedal when you're talking about price range. And then you've got above that, you've got the DRF, the VRS um, uh, Pro pedals, you've got the Husingfeld Ultimates, but the VRS pedals are something that everybody talks about because the price to performance, again, just like their wheelbase is amazing. But those VRS pedals, about $300 more, $300 more than I paid for these, they're about $250 more. And again, you have to ask yourself, are you going to get $250 more value out of those pedals than you would these? Are you going to get, you know, a, a, almost another 60% performance increase? Just like with many of the other pedals on the market. Are you going to go from these or sprints to Husingfeld Ultimates and you're going to see a vast difference in your performance? Probably not. It's in the margins. And again, if you can be consistent on these, you can be consistent on almost anything as long as, again, you train your, uh, your body to be able to use these load cells. So in conclusion, I would say get what your heart desires is the first thing. It's all subjective. None of this is written in stone. None of this is purely a fact. It's all my opinion based on my use case scenario. If I was to give you advice, I'd say pick these up. Two pedal set, you don't need anything extra. You don't need anything special. These are great pedals. They're machined extremely well. Um, the delivery process may take a little bit because from looking at it, um, they have shipped mine, which was order number 5670. They started at order 5600, so I was about 200 and some odd in. Um, so they've already got out to order 6,200. So it'll be a little bit before you get them. 
but I would say it's definitely well worth the wait. So go ahead and check out simgrade.fi uh, um, and check them out for yourself. Let me know what you think. Also, if you think this has brought some value to you and you think that maybe this guy has some knowledge, he's not actually an idiot, um, go ahead and give me the subscribe on there. Um, if you enjoy it, give me the thumbs up and more importantly, turn the notifications on because that's how you know what's coming. And you know, you get to join us, you get to join the family, you get to be a part of Grey's Dynamics. And as I grow, you grow. Um, many of you know I like to pay things forward. And if you have a Moza uh, Sim Magic or NRG Gen 2 style will um, a QR, let me know. I also have some free uh, wheel stands that I would love to send out to you. So as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for joining. And I will see you on the next one. Talk to you later. Peace.